Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Um, you have to excuse me, I've had a couple of beers. So, uh, it's currently the weekend of the, the bank holiday for the Queen's funeral, and uh, myself and I think 50 other photographers have come to uh, a meetup for a, a camp and a barbecue with uh, Thomas Heaton and Simon Baxter. And uh, as part of that, they asked us all to bring up an A4 print, um, basically to win some prizes. And I still can't quite believe it, and I'm, I'm in shock to be honest with you, but I actually won first prize with this photo. Um, the quality of the photos that are in that competition were absolutely outstanding. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to pinch myself because honestly, I do not know how I won that, won that competition. But basically, as part of the... Uh, First prize, I've won this bag. Shimoda 35 litre, uh, I think it's a Mark II bag. Um, yeah, I can't believe it, honestly. But fantastic place, um, absolutely fantastic to meet uh, both Simon and, and Thomas. Um, people I've looked up, up to for so, so long. Um, but I've also met uh, uh, Miley Davis as well and uh, Paul Compton, who's, who's been on my channel before. I'm just absolutely blown away. Um, really nice, genuine people, just as you see them on the videos, really. So, yeah, what a weekend. Um, I'm not sure what photography I'm going to get this weekend. Um, as I say, I'm a little bit inebriated at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I'm up in Yorkshire, basically, a place called Last Kill Country House. And it's an absolutely beautiful location. Um, so yeah, if I'm not feeling too bad in the morning, I'm going to get up and uh, hopefully get some nice woodland images. So I'll let you know how that goes. But uh, going to go in and have some more drinks with everybody and uh, settle down for the night and I'll see you in the morning. So uh, yeah, I didn't get out with the camera. Um, had a bit too much to drink to be honest with you, far too much to drink actually. Uh, so yeah, I was feeling a bit rough the next day so I didn't get out and do any photography but I still maintain, had a fantastic night, uh, both as I say, Thomas and Simon, fantastic host. The, the location, Last Kill Country House was fantastic as well. I think Thomas and Simon are on about doing this as, as a yearly thing, um, which would be really cool. Uh, so if you get the opportunity to do that, I highly recommend it. Um, what a fantastic evening. But yeah. As I say, I didn't go out with the camera. Um, uh, so this video this week, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, if you're a gear person, you, you hopefully you'll enjoy this. Um, if you're more interested in, in seeing me out in the field, they, taking photos, um, yeah, you might want to not watch this video. Um, but if you enter my competition, you definitely might want to stick to the end because I'm going to announce the winner for uh, the, the print that I, I did in my last video. Um, but then this weekend on my way uh, in mid Wales, taking the, the Aldis back to university and uh, me and the wife are thinking of wild camping somewhere in mid Wales. Not sure where yet and we'll see what happens with the weather. So I'm going to crack on with this but basically this week what I want to do is just uh, give you a bit of a rundown on what's in my bag. Um, it seems like a fitting time to do it considering I've won this bag and yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out and see what I can fit in there really. So I'm going to run through the items that I use, why I use them. Some general thoughts of why I use them. Um, not going to go into a full review of these items. Other people are far better at reviews than I am. But what I'll do is I'll give you a rundown on what I use, why I use it, and some general thoughts. So let's have a look. So starting with the tripod. My main tripod that I use is this absolute monster of a tripod. It's a Benro Mac Free TMA 48 CXL. Um, I've had quite a few different tripods in the past, but nothing has been as solid as this. Um, it's just rock solid. It goes up to about seven feet tall. Uh, and the reason why I wanted a tripod that tall is because I do a lot of woodland photography, and sometimes it just helps to get that bit of extra extension to be able to point the camera down slightly and cut out some of the sky. Um, but it's also useful if you're doing sort of like seascape photography, if you've got quite a steep shelf to the water, 
um, you can get those front legs right into the water uh, and cut out some of the foreground if you, if you so wish. Um, it's an absolute beast of a tripod. I'm not going to put it up because as I say it's, it's massive, um, but yeah, absolutely solid. And on the tripod itself, um, I've actually just upgraded and got a uh, Benro uh, leveling base, which is absolutely fantastic. It makes panos so much easier. Just get the tripod kind of level, and then you can just undo this uh, this lever here, and you've got the ability to then basically uh, move that around as you wish um, to, to basically get the, uh, the ball head there lined up, uh, and you know you're pretty much set to take a pano. Um, yeah, absolutely love the tripod. And the next thing I've got, well as you saw at the start of the video, is uh, recently acquired, <laughs> is the uh, Shimoda uh, Explore 35 litre uh, version 2. Um, first impressions, absolutely fantastic bag. Can't wait to get it out in the field and give it a go. Uh, it's got a lovely sort of very tough feeling, quite waterproof uh, feeling bag, uh, but it does come with its own raincoat as well. So if you get the uh, situations where you know it's a torrential downpour, you can put that on and, and be pretty sure your, your, your gear and style is going to be pretty well protected. Um, but it's got absolutely endless amounts of pockets. You know anything you might want to pull in there really um, so I can't really give you my review on it yet because I've not used it but um, first impressions really good the straps seem super super comfy um, as to what I've actually got in the bag well <laughs> carry quite a lot of gear um, starting with the camera it's a uh, Sony a7R3 um, I've only had it for less than a year um, but I absolutely love this camera and I cannot see myself changing it anytime soon. I upgraded from an A7 II last year, which was actually a very good camera and I've shot most of my best photos on there, but what this does for me is it gives me such an improved battery life. I mean, the, the A7 II's battery life really needs no introduction. It's abysmal, awful. Whereas this, I can be pretty much shooting all day and know that I'm not going to have to change the battery. I still take a spare battery just in case, but generally speaking, I don't need to change it. Uh, shoot 4K video, um, absolutely love it. Um, I've mated it to a small rig, uh, owl bracket. Again, absolutely love that. It's quite a bit of beefy one. Um, great for getting the camera straight into a, a portrait orient orientation, uh, especially useful when you're doing panos or if you're just taking a portrait photo. But the reason I went for this L bracket, I and mean, if you're a Sony user, yeah, you'll appreciate this. It's got this button here. You press that, it opens up the, the bottom of the, the L bracket so you can get easy access to the battery compartment. Fantastic, great, great design. But if you've got big fat hands like myself as well, the reason why I went for this, uh, this L bracket is because when you close that up, it gives your, uh, gives you a home for your finger to live, your little pinky finger. So yeah, absolutely love that. Um, one thing I have done with this camera, because when you're out in conditions actually like it is now, it's raining, um, I've taken off the eyepiece, uh, the, the, like the little, yeah, the eyepiece there. And the reason why is because there's a little sensor just on here, which if that gets wet, or if that gets any kind of uh, moisture or anything in it at all, it tends to basically, um, Take it for take the what you see on the screen and actually display it on the uh, on the electric viewfinder, which is really annoying when you're trying to frame off the shot. Um, so by taking off the viewfinder, it just gives me a bit of that easy access just to wipe that sensor clean with my finger uh, and be sure that basically uh, I can see the the screen rather than the, the viewfinder. So fantastic camera, absolutely love it. Can't see myself changing it anytime soon. Um, I have looked at the A7R4 and I think there's possibly an A7R5 coming out, but 42 megapixels for me I think really is a sweet spot. You know, I've printed some prints called Sway 3 Plus and they, they come out beautifully. You know, I can't fault with detail at all. Talking of detail, um, the current lens I've got on this is a Sony 24 105 um, G lens. This one here. 
it gets absolutely fantastic reviews by people, but I don't like it. Well, I don't like it in the sort of 24 to 30 mil range. Um, I don't know if I've got a bad copy, but between 24 to 30 mil, sort of gets in the distance, the whole left hand side of the frame, pretty much from the thirds, um, is really, really soft. I've already sent it back to Sony once, they told me they fixed it, been out and no, uh, still, still no good. And by the time I've uh, procrastinated, it's now run out of warranty. So kind of stuck with this for now, a um, bit frustrating, but um, anything above 30mm, an absolutely class lens, really pin sharp all the way through to, to 100 and, uh, 105 mil so yeah at some point when I can afford it I might look a little greater than that um, lens wise what else have I got I have the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter, millimeter um, which is a fantastic lens it weighs hardly anything um, it's an f2.8 lens so for any time that I want to do astrophotography this is pretty much perfect um, and it's just yeah, just so compact. It's got some some form of weather sealing to it as well, um, which is great, especially when you're out in conditions like it is today. And yeah, absolutely love it. I actually had one before. Found I wasn't really shooting much wide wide angle photography. Sold it, missed it, and bought it again. Um, yeah, a bit stupid of me, but um, fantastic lens and a great price as well. Um, I think it's around 500 pounds um, when you buy it second hand like I did here. Great lens, really pin sharp as well. And then, possibly my favorite lens of the lot, and one I probably use more often than not, is this beast, which is the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter. Uh, it's an F, uh, F5 to F6.3. It's not the fastest lens in the world, but for the type of photography I'm doing, that, that doesn't concern me at all. But it really gets me um, you know, the ability to, to really zoom in on scenes and pick out details. Absolutely pin sharp. Um, I've not used a Sony G Master equivalent, but if it's any sharper than this, I'll be very, very surprised. Um, weighs a lot less than the G Master, I believe, from looking at the specs. And it has optical um, image stabilization built in. It's just a fantastic lens. I would not be without this now. Absolutely love it. Um, one thing I did make sure I bought for it was a tripod collar. Um, that just helps it sit on the tripod a lot better with the camera attached to it. Uh, just helps balance balance the camera out a bit because if, if you've got the camera on the end there and you've got even the slightest wind, that, that, camera, that lens just moves around absolute loads and trying to frame up a shot, that's an absolute nightmare. And more often than not, you end up with blurry shots than you do with, uh, with sharp ones. Great lens, absolutely love it. And then, really, the last piece of photography equipment, as such, well, for the camera anyway, is my uh, filters. So I'm using Case uh, Wolverine magnetic filters. These are fantastic. I mean, these just uh, slot straight onto the lens magnetically. Um, so much less faff, to be honest with you. I uh, used to have the ones where you had to screw them in. You feel like you're there for, for years and years trying to screw them in, and sometimes you wouldn't get the screw just right, and you'd probably drop one on the floor. But these, you know, they're so re so reassuring to use. You just get them in your hand, get the camera, clip them straight on, um, and then when you're done, you just take it straight off without having to screw around. Um, love them, fantastic. Uh, what have I got actually? Uh, so I've got the polarizer, uh, I've got a six stop, 10 stop and three stop. Uh, I don't use graduated filters. Um, if I'm in a scene which has a, a large dynamic range, typically I'll just bracket photos. Um, but to be honest, the, the dynamic range on the Sony A7 R3 is ridiculous. Um, it's very, very rare that I have to uh, bracket the shots. Um, normally I just expose for the highlights and I'm able to pull those shadows back uh, in Paris. If it's, an, if it's a really extreme uh, dynamic uh, scene, then yeah, I'll bracket and I'll merge those together, uh, do an exposure blend in Photoshop. So yeah, that's the photography gear. Um, I won't go through the, camp, the, the video gear that I've got today, um, but just, just so you know, I'm using a, a Sony ZV-1 uh, which is basically a 4K camera, really tiny little camera, fantastic. The 
battery life is atrocious, uh, as seems to be the case with many Sony's. Um, but what I've actually just uh, recently done is I've bought an adapter to be able to plug a USB power bank into it. So battery life now should last pretty much all day, to be honest. So uh, great little camera, love it. And then also for my video, I have uh, my little DJI Mini 2, which is a great little drone. Um, I had the DJI Mini 1 for it before, but it just really struggled in the wind, to be honest with you. Um, and the picture quality wasn't great. This just seemed like a bit, bit of a step up. I would absolutely love um, a DJI Mini 3, why would you be listening? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that can wait for a while, to be honest with you. Um, but no, for now, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the only thing I don't like is the controller, because to use the controller, you've got to put the, uh, got to put the phone in there, um, and then you've got to faff around for wire. Whereas the new uh, DJI Mini 3, it has a screen built into the controller, so you can just literally whip the uh, drone out, whip the uh, controller out, and then off you fly. And I think if I had that, I'd probably use it a lot more because it's a bit of a faff sometimes. Um, so that really is that. So, a bit of a short video today, a um, bit of a gear related one. I'm, I'm, I've never done a gear related video before, so let me know what you think in the comments. But as I say, uh, back to some normality in my next video. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, looking forward to hopefully getting out there in the tent and see what photos we can get. Um, but then, one other thing. Uh, I'd like to announce the winner for uh, from my last week's video, which is to win the A3 print of the Langdale Pikes and Side Pike. Um, so I'm going to put that on the app now and uh, see who the winner is. Okay, so I've put the uh, my YouTube link into this website called commentpicker.com, and it's basically going to go through the comments in the YouTube channel and choose who the uh, the winner is. So it'd be someone who's entered the hashtag one year on the video. Uh, so good luck. Enter your names, Brian Egerton. Yeah, it's going too fast for me to read. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, Brian Egerton, uh, congratulations, you've won the uh, the print. If you uh, drop me an email to the email I'll put in the uh, the comments below uh, with your address details, I'll get that posted out to you. Um, the observant among you will notice I'm in a different colour t-shirt and it's sunny today. Um, I recorded a whole end piece and forgot I hadn't plugged the mic into the camera. So I'm redoing that now, but uh, yeah. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to be back out in the hills and back out taking photos this weekend. Um, but uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. See you soon.